Okay, here we go. The very last process in the entire book for us. Well done. Woo! Okay, control procurements. This is about managing those procurement relationships that we have just built. Monitoring their performance, making changes, and closing the contract. Okay, we're going to make sure that both the bot seller and the buyer's performance meet the project requirements. So there I am uh, moving now to the inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs. I am beginning on page 495. Remember the project management plan is an input to control every time. So is work performance data, EEFs, and OPAs. So I have some other inputs that uh, make sense. Agreements, my contracts, right? The procurement documents that went with them, and any approved changes at this point. Remember, I also had approved changes in other, few other processes, such as uh, direct and managed project work. Okay. Tools and techniques include expert judgment, uh, claims administration, Claims administration is about contested changes. Those can turn uh, into potential disputes, which can lead to appeals. Okay, and that will involve then ADR. Remember, we talked about alternative dispute resolution, mediation, arbitration, or uh, in worst case, some legal remedy. Just please note that negotiation in claims administration. Negotiation is the preferred method. Okay? From a data analysis perspective in tools and techniques, there are performance reviews, earned value analysis, including um, schedule variance, cost variance, cost performance index, and schedule performance index. We discussed that in cost management. And then there's trend analysis like the EAC, Estimate at Completion. We also discuss that in cost management. Inspection is a tool here in controlled procurements. It was also a tool in Validate Scope and a tool in uh, Quality Control. So inspection. And the key is a structured review and walkthroughs at the site by both the buyer and the seller or the contractor uh, will often ensure mutual understanding. It's good for everybody. And then we have our outputs. One are the closed procurement. Okay, This is when the buyer, usually through its authorized administrator, like the procurement manager, provides the seller with formal written notice of the contract has been completed. Remember, you, I want, as the buyer, at the end of my whole project, outside of procurement, I want formal acceptance of final deliverables. We've talked about that in quality control and validate scope, uh, rather. Uh, and so will they. They will want uh, formal written acceptance of the final deliverable, that it meets our specifications, our scope, which is reflected in the statement of work. So obviously then we're going to need requirements documentation usually defines the contract uh, and the timing, etc. Okay. Work performance information is regularly an output in control. So our change requests, plan updates, document updates. And here then we have OPA updates, um, organizational process assets that can be updated as a result of pr pr control procurement. The pre-qualified seller list can be updated lessons learned based on this contract, the strategy, the uh, contract vehicle, fixed price, cost reimbursable, or time and material. Those can all be uh, updated. Okay, so almost finished here. Control procurements is performed as a key to managing the relationships as the buyer project manager. Remember I mentioned earlier the buyer and seller both administer the procurement relationship to ensure they match the contract. Is the product delivered? Is it on time? What about the invoicing requirements? What about quality standards? What about inspections? 
Uh, if there's a change order, we want to ensure it is listed in the contract. Contracts can have changes, and those usually result in something called a change order uh, that the buyer will put out. So we want to integrate the change order into our already firmly established and well-defined integrated change control process of our project to make the contract really part of the project processes. Okay. Uh, in control procurements, again, it's about managing the changes, like managing the relationships of the buyer and seller. So it's about managing the changes also. When there are many changes, we might even consider terminating the contract and starting fresh. There are some terms to be aware of, like claims administration. It's how we file claims. Claims are basically disagreements. Okay? The buyer can cause the seller to actually file a claim. What if I get in their way? What if I don't uphold as the buyer my end of the bargain? What if I keep bugging them when I'm not supposed to? What if I want more inspections than is allowed, slowing them down? Okay, so be careful. Congested, contested changes and constructive changes are where the buyer uh, and the seller uh, have uh, issues. And they cannot reach agreement on compensation. They, they may not even agree that a change has occurred. And oftentimes you will reach settlement through negotiation and again, when that's not possible through ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution. Okay. Okay. Some final things to watch out for. If I have a fixed price contract, I as the project manager want to make sure the seller, if they fall behind, isn't cutting scope or quality. That's what, what has me up at night. If it's time and material, I want to make sure they get day-to-day -day directions with concrete deliverables coming in, checking their hours that they bill, etc. And if it's cost reimbursable, I want to audit every invoice, invoice and make sure uh, the costs are appropriate. Okay. Uh, there, we need a, a great records management system because this is about the law, uh, this understanding of responsibilities. And frankly, we want to be able to prove that we've kept our end of the bargain. The contract interpretation. Uh, there will oftentimes be a need to interpret contracts. And this oftentimes leads to a lawyer being involved. Okay? Be, and it's based on the analysis of the intent. The contractor contract supersedes any memos that may have been written, any conversations or discussions. And if you terminate a contract, you can terminate for cause or convenience. Now, uh, cause, like a breach, is usually very clear and in the contract. For convenience, the government, for example, often does this. They will terminate for convenience because, as upheld by the law, the court says, look, the real, the real buyer of the goods and services, the people who pay taxes, aren't really present. So to protect them, the government can terminate for convenience, say I no longer want the product. If you do that in a commercial contract, you probably want to write that into the contract itself. Okay. Uh, when to close a procurement? You close it when it's completed. Even if you're in the middle of a project, you may have completed the procurement, the contract for that work package. So go ahead and close it. Uh, and or if the contract is terminated, you would automatically go into closing. You don't just walk away. Okay. You're going to want to capture lessons learned, uh, best practices, that sort of thing. Okay. Some final thoughts. These are just for you to read on control procurement. And that wraps up this course. I hope you enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it a bunch. And I look forward to seeing you all online or in person 